to me, I suppose, would have, would have at some point um, meant going against what, say, for an example, my parents would want or what society expects of you, um, and becoming a, a part of a community that expresses themselves in in a a form of music and and a fashion. Uh, punk to me now is more uh, a community. It's not so much the sort of music you play, it's uh, the way you play it, uh, the sort of people you play it, the way you uh, address situations and the way you uh, promote yourself. I don't think it's a, a form of music, I don't think it's like an attitude, I think that's 30 years ago, I think now it's more a way, the way you present yourself and your attitudes and your ethics and your beliefs. Um, punk rock to me is, um, when I first got into punk at 16, it was uh, stupid haircuts, baggy clothes, and fast music, and it was exciting because it was against the status quo. But as when, when you scratch the surface, um, punk is, is a family. It's, um, to me, the image of punk is something that I find ridiculous. Um, I mean, not, not to say that people shouldn't um, re ex express themselves, but you know, people, when you, when you say you play in a punk rock band, they say, oh, I like the Sex Pistols. To me, the Sex Pistols are a joke. They, they, they paved the way for a lot of things, but when you talk about punk, to me, the Clash were a far more important band than, than the Sex Pistols. Um, because they actually addressed things and talked about things that were real. Um, and yeah, to me, that is what punk is. It's a forum where people can express themselves. this band people would be like what sort of music do you play and I'd be like well it's kind of punk music two minutes later I find myself going well, we don't sound like the Sex Pistols I think sometimes people you tell someone you're in a punk band they they immediately have a sort of idea about what they they think they know what it means they jump to the conception you know you always get like Oh yeah, like Sex Pistols sort of thing. Yeah. It's like <laughs> not, not really. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, yeah. that happens so often now. I just say like, yeah, just like the Sex Pistols. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Original punk was um, wasn't didn't have a, a political kind of bent to it. You know, it wasn't supposed to be. It wasn't a left wing or anarchist thing. I mean, it, it wasn't the sense that the Sex Pistols were anarchy in the UK, but their anarchism was more like kind of uh, shock slogans and mm -hmm. you know yeah. and and just. I mean, they they weren't mindless, but I <laughs> think it was more contrived. And the it was bands like the Clash that were obviously more politically <laughs> kind of motivated. Um, but I think the original punk bands were more into just. The, the, the shocks, you know, the, mm -hmm. the shock tactics, and the and uh, and just I don't know, kind of sidestepping all of society's you know conventions. Okay. I mean, it, which is great, which is still great. It's still part of what punk rock means. But the politics, I think, came in, you know, from a different place. I am an anti I mean, I think the anarchist bands of the uh, late you know, after after the first wave. I think the anarchist bands and the anarcho punk scene is what changed mm -hmm. everything. You know, crass changed everything. Mm -hmm. You know, 1979 to 84, and bands like the Subhumans and mm -hmm. you know, Conflict. These are the bands that mm -hmm. that these are the bands that really got to me mm -hmm. because when I got into punk at a really young age, I just liked the music and the and the energy. Didn't quite know why. I was very young, mm -hmm. so I love bands like Stiff Little Fingers and. They were but actually another very political band, you know, mm -hmm. um, but I didn't know that because I was kind of 10, 11, 12 years old, I wasn't aware of it. But uh, yeah, it was bands like Crass, Fox Big Indians that, that made me realise that it was more than just music. <laughs>
You think of like US hardcore in the 80s and it was disillusioned suburban kids who were just, their parents were working real jobs earning real money and they were rebelling against that. You have the 70s UK punks that were rebelling against sort of almost fascist state. Um, and, but now, I mean, we're not rebelling against anything. We're not really rebelling against anything. I think people like need a sense of community that they don't have otherwise. We're so detached from a, a like a, a feeling of community that that's why people are into punk and that's why they play in hardcore bands. That's why they go to shows because they want to be part of something that, that that they don't otherwise have because that everyone's dehumanised by our culture and our government and stuff in a, in a way that we don't we don't have any sort of sense of, of self worth. So we we join something where we feel like we're doing something positive and we're being a part of something and I think that's what punk is today is like being a part of something and, and making a change whether it's within your group of friends it's, it's just proof that there's like you can live outside the mainstream and not be completely screwed do you know what I mean and yeah. a lot of people that's try and scare you into thinking you have to live this certain way mm -hmm. follow these steps but that's not the case everybody gets wrapped up in their own world um, and you can, I mean, you, you'll probably have uh, like uh, things that have happened that have upset you or pissed you off in the past um, that you felt sh like strongly enough that, that maybe you've turned to uh, to certain music to, to um, I suppose, uh, to relate to something else mm -hmm. um, and to feel that expression. There's a sense of, it doesn't have to be political as in national politics or international politics, but the, like the personal politics, I think that's, I think yeah. punk, punk to me is about personal politics and um, the, the sorts of things that, that we have to address these days, you know, uh, like gender phobia, uh, homophobia, racism, sexism, I think that the personal politics is far more important than saying fuck Maggie Thatcher. Uh, like that to me is what what like the politics and punk is today is the way you present yourself and your beliefs and how you're putting your message across and, and, and trying to make a change for the positive rather than to the detriment of other people I mean you know I think I don't know I don't understand anyone who isn't pro-feminist you know, who isn't um, kind of um, turned on to politics in a way that obviously you you refuse and resist power you know I don't, this it seems a no-brainer to me I don't understand how you can argue from the other side unless you've grown up in that kind of environment, you know, and it benefits you in some way. I mean, it doesn't benefit any of us to, to not be into equality and not to be pro-feminist mm -hmm. and not to be anti-racist and, 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 you know, anti-homophobic. So I guess it's kind of, I don't know, it's our culture now, isn't it? So I think all of us were uh, gay, gay positive, trans positive, uh, hate racism. I think it's like the lowest form like the simplest form of, of discrimination for based on no real reason other than ignorance. Um, like I, I wouldn't say that as a band we're particularly political in a like sociological we're not like, sense. We're not outspoken about it, but, but it's, I, yeah. it's what we believe. Yeah. I think those things you said there are, are sort of just the basis for all punks, their beliefs. Do you know what I mean? That's if you haven't got that, then go home. Sort of yeah, thing. you're in the wrong. You're in the wrong movement. You're in the wrong scene. I'm 
wasn't writing it was like a little thing but I guess what I was saying earlier if you're writing about general life things it, 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 that's going to creep in and that's just like you know everyone knows about that kind of thing if you work shitty jobs or yeah. do you know what I mean you're like at various times in your life you're scraping to get by and stuff and but the number of people is fucked especially this city to, to I guess view like monetary worth as a big indicator of success and status and, and obviously it's not but it is it across the media across the TV programs and everything money is basically the biggest thing do you know what I mean if you've got it you're the shit and if you don't fuck off <laughs> make the jump to, to being vegan, um, I just haven't, yeah I think I think we, we'll always support those subcultures and for me, um, I first learned about being, uh, about vegetarianism from a, a punk rock show, one of the bands were handing out leaflets and that sparked my interest and, and that led to me becoming vegetarian so it can have a, a, an impact on people's lives and change people's lives. I think someone like Crazy Arm is a good example of a band that still maintains a really punk ethic and like they always like all their songs are based in like folk tradition but yeah the politics are still there and yes. they're still saying valid things early every year the seeds are growing and see the unheard, they lie beneath the ground Which you know before the leaves were showing That with weeds on your garden If you close your eyes, stop your ears Shut your mouth and how can you know For seeds you cannot see may not be there Seeds you cannot hear may never grow uh, It was written by Peggy Seeger, mm -hmm. which is kind of... Um, Backs up what I said that mm -hmm. punk rock isn't didn't start in '76 or the attitude didn't start in '76 mm -hmm. because she's like you know she's 80 off this year. Mm -hmm. She wrote that the song "Song of Choice" in 1965 or mm -hmm. something. Anti-fascist song, very militant. You You've know. changed it a bit. Oh, we we made it a little bit more punk rock <laughs> at the end. You know, I mean, I'm an angry man, so I made it a more update version of that of her version of her song, just more you know, just a bit more angry. But um, yeah, I mean, it's an anti-fascist song. It's. Uh, you know, it, it was relevant in the 60s, and it's relevant in the 70s and 80s and 90s, and it's relevant now. So close your eyes, stop your ears, shut your mouth and take it slow. Let us take the lead and you'll bring out the rear. Later you can say you didn't know. Today you may have... You know, it just seems like, you know, there's how much things change, because it's just as relevant today as it was. 60 years ago, you know, and it's kind of, I don't know, it's frustrating that I have to, we have to sing that song, or anybody has to sing that song, 60 years later. It's alright for you if you run with the pack, it's okay if you agree with all they do, if fascism is slowly coming back, it's not a yet, so what's it gotta do with you? Kind of resisting any form of oppression, whether it's, you know, a clearly fascist government or a fascist organisation or something that, that, that kind of plays into fascist hands, which groups like, um, sorry, parties like the uh, UKIP do. So, um, 
and even the Tories, you know, obviously playing to play the race card when they need to. So yeah, it's about kind of recognising those those kind of that negativity and yeah, always always resisting it. Oh, the EDL is standing up for England, but not an England that I want to see. As an atheist, I stand side by side with Sikhs and Muslims to deny the racists any victory. Neo-Nazi Nick Griffin takes the front seat And a thousand ugly bird boys raise their hands Well I shoot those bastards dead before their hateful nuts are spread Nazi scumbags must never take command The BNP will never get to rule my land so In that sense, yeah, it is... You know, it's a stand strong song, isn't it? I mean, it's like, you know, just beware of what's happening don't let it, don't let it fester, don't let it grow, because it will devour your community. You know, and that's pretty much, and that's what you can do against fascism is kind of keep it, you know, just keep it squashed. And if it happens here, they'll never come for you, because they'll know you really didn't care. Because they'll know you really didn't care. Commercialized from the start. I mean, yep. there's, there's no. It's funny. It got uncommercialized by by that anarchist punk scene. You can trace it back to the beginning of punk, um, because I mean, Malcolm McLaren, who was sort of obviously charged with leading the, you know, the the, the look of, of punk, you know, the Sex Pistols. You know, it was a, a money making situation. Um, so uh, yeah, I think punk was commercialized from day one. Really, I, there are. You know, true punk bands still existing today, um, but I think it's always always been commercialised. Not a look, is it? It's a it's a lifestyle, like you said, and I think like yeah. people don't really understand that. Mm -hmm. But fuck them. It's definitely something that you can like. You can pick up the punk look for about thirty quid from the high street nowadays. <laughs> mohawks, they they don't have that same like visual impact as they would have in the seventies. Like some of the pink mohawk walking through London would have been crazy to like some 70 year old lady who'd never seen that before but like now it's it's so it's been so muted by being overdone yeah, by everyone diluted isn't it yeah yeah like you can buy Ramones t-shirts in H&M and h and like, H&M like, you know, like in fashion retailers and because every now and again something will spark up and it'll be like oh yeah that guy's wearing a Ramones shirt let's wear Ramones shirts and then they'll be like you know do you know what the Ramones are and they'll be like I, this is a, I got this in H&M, I, yeah. I don't know what this is. Yeah, because it was shocking at the time and nobody had done it before, but when you see a kid with a mohawk now, it's like, oh, he's just got a mohawk, he's just like a kid that's just trying to find his feet. DIY spaces that people are trying to do, and cause, because they don't want to have to pay venue fees, they don't want to do all these kind of things that, that isn't really punk. It's more about just human beings and not about, you know, kind of being controlled by, by venues and promoters. It's, mm -hmm. it's something else, and that goes back before that predates punk. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. And it's just, just the vibe is so nice in there, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That wouldn't if this was 1976, it would be a fucking it would just be chaos in there. And it would, yeah. People wouldn't really care about each other. There'd be lots of broken glass and people would be fucking each other up, and it'd just be a mess, you know. Yeah. That was the original spirit of punk, yeah, yeah. which is cool, you know. It was great at the time, but it was just the best thing ever, you know. But um. I think it's just too friendly to be that kind of thing anymore. I think I think this is more late sixties. This is a late sixties revival. <laughs> so all that the kind of political aspect of punk mm -hmm. and the pure kind of um, you know unquantifiable like passion of punk mm -hmm. were things that that all I cared about, mm -hmm. you know, in my teens, mm -hmm. and it's kind of all I care about now. Mm -hmm. But to pu punk means kind of some, nothing and everything, doesn't it? There will be punks, bands, and promoters who do it for money, and then there'll be people like us who do it for love. Mm -hmm.